Yes! I did it! <laughs> it's working! What's going on everybody and welcome to part 2 of the 2005 Kawasaki 750 uh, stator replacement. As you can see here, I've got the new stator. Here's the old one. Uh, here's a new gasket. So, first step, what I'm going to do is I need to clean out this um, the uh, surface where the gasket goes on here and on the cover itself. I'm going to use a razor, scrape it off, and then use a scour pad and clean off the rest of it. So after, after that's done, I'm going to run to the store. I need to pick up some oil and oil filter for the bike. Uh, my plan is to assemble everything, plug everything in, fill it up with oil, uh, start the bike, and test to make sure that it's charging. So we've got the plan for today, so let's get started. Alright, first up, let's get the old uh, stator out. Ooh. This one. Let's compare them. So this is the original one, I'm assuming, because of the way the wires are. These are just like exposed, but they are covered with some kind of silicone substance on here. So, okay. So I'll cover this up with a rag so I don't get any of this gasket material in, in there. I'm gonna go ahead and go with the razor and clean it up. Okay, so some of you may not approve this method, but this is a steel wool, real fine. This is a little bit of gasoline. I dip this in the gas and I start wiping down the gasket surface and it comes right off, it's perfect. Just make sure you're in an open area so you're not breathing this stuff in and wear some gloves. People can't drive. Just go to town with it. It'll, it'll clean it right off. I got the majority of it off with the screwdriver. And so, yeah. So I didn't have any uh, brake cleaner, I thought I did, so I sprayed it down with a um, purple power degreaser and hit, rinsed it with some water and I'm going to blow it out with my uh, compressed air. Let this sit and air dry for a little bit just to make sure that all the water's gone. I went ahead and cleaned this cover off as well, and this surface right here, nice and clean, ready for a new gasket. All right, guys, so I had to run to the store real quick to pick up some of this ultra gray RTV, and uh, I bought some oil and an oil filter. Uh, went to Cycle Gear and Cycle Gear wanted like $78 for oil and oil filter. Stop by the dealership, 45 bucks, oil and oil filter. It's a Yamaha loop for Yamaha, but oil is oil, so I don't care. They got the right oil filter, got the right um, oil, 10W40, so I'm fine with that. So this is the oil I'm going, going for, 10W40, Yamaha loop. And this is the high flow uh, filter, oil filter that I'm using. Alright, so first I'm going to put this uh, stator on here.
thinking, do I need to put RTV? Because they had RTV on here. And I apologize for the background noise because they're um, cutting my neighbor's yard right now. Cutting the cutting lawn. I believe it goes in like that. Gotta make sure that this wire goes behind the tab right here. Like that. And then this guy goes in in this place right here it's a rubber garment now i don't know if i need to put rtv in there i think i will just just because i don't want to come back to it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull this off real quick put a little dab of rtv and slide that sucker in there i like to use this um ultra gray high torque RTV. This stuff works great. Oh yeah. A little bit of gasoline and a paper towel does the trick and i just found a problem why the bike wasn't charging look at that that is crazy so now i have to buy crap now i gotta buy a set of these and i don't even know what they're called i need to do some research this is why it wasn't charging it wasn't the stator the stator was probably good this wire right here was broken the whole time and I didn't even notice that it was broken. That's insane. Great. All right. So we're putting this aside for now. I have to go buy a set of whatever these are, brushes or whatever they're called. So yeah, I'm a little bit bummed out about this, that this was the problem the whole time and I did not catch this. I don't know how I didn't catch this. I didn't pay too much attention to them. <clears throat> or I must have broken them when I was when I was removing them because I remember them being attached to the wire. These are the coils or the pulse coils, whatever they're called. These are original because it says Japan on them. I don't know if you can see that, but it says Japan on them. So like these are original OEM from the bike. So that was probably the problem the whole time. The wire inside just broke and the insulation of the wire was the only thing holding because they are pretty hard and brittle. That's from years of oil being on them. So it is what it is. I was able to source some. I couldn't find any specifically for this bike, but I did find some for a Vulcan 900. I looked at the pictures and everything. It was on Amazon and they look exactly the same. Uh, 35 bucks, order them. Only downside is it's gonna take about a week to get here. So for you guys, it's gonna be like two seconds. For me, it'll be a week. So waiting game. Can't do anything without them. Gotta wait. All right, so I finally got the parts in. These guys right here. Gonna go ahead and try them on, see how they fit, um, and continue with assembling the bike. So comparing the two, they're identical. I don't know if you can see that, but they are exactly the same dimensions. The only issue is because these are from like a Kawasaki 900, um, the Vulcan 900. The only issue is when you put them in here, these little grooves, they don't go into those little grooves. So like, let me show you. 
with this one on this side when you put it in it's supposed to go in between these little little grooves right here like a little alignment um pins or whatever you want to call them it's supposed to go in between them so i think what i'm going to try to do is just use my bench grinder and uh, carefully trim the edges around here and here until it fits nice and snug in here and i uh, think that should do it ideally you want to find the oem ones the ones that fit in here so that it has the perfect distance between the little magnet the contact and the uh, the magneto but i was unable to find oem uh what are these coil pulse generators so i bought some that looked the same uh for a kawasaki vulcan 900 and the connector is the same and the wire length is the same as well and, like the rubber garment's the same the only thing is like i said is just these right here so i'm gonna go i'm gonna go ahead and just trim them up real quick and go from there Almost a little bit more trimming and we'll get this one in All right, I'm gonna finish trimming these on off camera and then I'll get back to you once I'm done All right, here you go Nice and trimmed And now When we put them in here They fit right into the groove like it's supposed to Boom Perfect all right, let's. Uh, I'm gonna have to zip tie these wires in together after we secure these with the uh, screws, and then these wires will have to go all up back here. So, I'll get started on that. All right, next step is I'm gonna put some RTV on this gasket and then put this gasket on the bike. Because we have RTV on this gasket, it'll stick nicely to here. It's not going to fall out. So I can put the cover back on here. I'm going to put a little bit of RTV on, on the cover as well. Not a lot.
Okay, so unfortunately, I don't have a torque wrench. So, I'm gonna do my best to not over torque these. That should be it, nice and tight. Everything looks good here. Yep. Now the one thing I wanted to check, I'm gonna show you guys here in just a second. One thing that I wanna check is the distance the clearance between the um, uh, where is it? Between the metal little magnet there and the magneto wheel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this one out and put the old one in there and compare between here and here and see what the what the uh, distance is. All right, so you can see this one there and this one. Just eyeballing it, they look identical. I don't see a difference in gap at all. So that makes me that makes me really happy. I have a feeling this is gonna work, it's gonna charge like it should. So let me put this one back in and then I'm gonna leave the cover off for now to let the RTV dry completely before I fill it up with oil. So I wanna make sure it cures and dries. So I'm going to give it about an hour or so, and then we're going to put the cover back in, fill it up with oil, connect the um, the wires, and give it a crank and see what happens. Okay, so while I was waiting for this uh, RTV to dry, I got the old um, connector from the stator, and I've depinned it, pulled these pins out, and cut the wires off and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to cut these off because they're different they're not going to fit this uh, connector so i'm going to cut these off as well and i'm going to splice these in and solder them in uh put some heat shrink on it make sure it's weatherproof and uh put it back into to the connector so it connects to the um rectifier
All right, so I got this connector all done. It's uh, connections are soldered, the pins are back in, ready to be plugged in. So I'm gonna put this aside right now. Next stop is to put this cover back on. This one here. Um, I'm just gonna put a tab of RTV right here where the threads are. And uh, maybe just a little, well, I'm not gonna put RTV, this seal is brand new. Alright, next stop is the uh, starter cable, <clears throat> the one that goes right here. Okay, now I'm going to plug in the rectifier. That goes here. Then that goes to the positive and the negative uh, battery terminal. And then the one with the stator goes here, like that. Get the battery put the battery in here Be using some of this premium Yama Lube in my Kawasaki. All right, now it's the moment of truth. Got oil in there. Turn the key. Give it power. Put it on choke.
I wonder if the oil is a little too thick. Let me get some jumper cables on this thing see if it'll crank over all right got some jumper cables on it gonna give it one more uh give it one more go i don't think i've unplugged anything else ran perfect before I took anything apart and now it doesn't seem like it wants to run maybe it's too cold I'll see I'll just keep messing with it and then uh, I'll, I'll, I'll start recording again once I find out what happened all right so I think I found what the issue is with the bike these um, uh, coils are in here that I installed um, I believe I need to switch places because the bike is off timing. Um, I think that's what's going on. So I'm going to drain the oil into a clean container because I'm going to reuse it. Brand new oil, no point of throwing it away. Um, and swap places with them and see if the bike starts. Let's give it one more try. 
Hopefully it doesn't need a jump start. So we got 12.5. Choke on. Please work. All at once. You guys just saw this thing works uh, got it running it's charging now so it's perfect so I'm gonna do it one more time just for the record so right here it's showing 12.6 go to run no choke crank it over oh turn the key first Thanks everybody for watching, until next time, peace.